You remember Jay Sean, right? Well, if you don't, we don't blame you. He seemed to be here one day and then gone the next. Wouldn't be the first time we've heard that blues. You think being signed to one of the biggest labels of the 2010s, cash money would have, could have, and should have boosted Jay's career to new heights. But yet, here we are. Jay Sean's pop radio hit down was, as we always say on this channel, a bop. A Canadian artist had all the tools to set him up for greatness, but the ball dropped somewhere down the line, leaving cash money down a member and Jay Sean riding the last good years of Down's coattail. Young Money, Cash Money Records, or YCMB were the kings of the crop in hip hop. Cash Money's bid as the biggest hip hop label around established in the 90s and ran well into the 2000s. Sharing his expertise with his industry son, Wayne, Birdman gave Wheezy all the tools he needed to establish his own cash money imprint that would later be known as Young Money back in 2005. It hadn't been till around 2008 that Static Major pinned Wayne his biggest crossover hit to date, with Lollipop setting Wayne up to become one of the greatest hip-hop artists of the next decade. Being the CEO of Young Money, Wayne, using his own success as a springboard, gathered talent from all over the world to make up Young Money Entertainment. Introducing Gutta Gutta, Lil Chucky, Chanel, and a handful of other talents we'd never be thoroughly introduced to given that all of Wayne's attention was fully set on two of the many artists signed to Young Money, and for good reason. Nicki Minaj and Drake had Young Money set. But that didn't stop Wayne from signing even more talent to the roster. You had novelty acts like Chanel West Coast, but other artists were actually good, believe it or not. One of those artists being UK-based singer-songwriter Jay Sean. Though he wasn't directly signed to Wayne's Young Money, he might have well been. Bird gave Wayne leeway to experiment with Jay and practically mentored him as well as with those in cash money. Jay spent a large portion of his time studying medicine in the London School of Medicine and Dentistry before deciding to do what many musicians seeking that big break do in the midst of hunger. Kamal Jeet Singh, Juti, dropped out of high school in the year 2003 to attempt to do his big one with the bros, giving himself the name Jay Sean in the process. Jay stems from his last name, Juti, and his grandmother used to always call him Sean. Don't ask us why. Spending long nights making music and partaking in underground, vibey jam sessions, by chance, one of his tracks landed into the hands of producer Rishi Rich, who gave Jay his first real big break. Initially, he was a part of UK's Asian underground scene as part of Rishi Rich's musical project before landing on the property of Young Money Entertainment. But before he weaseled his way onto the roster, Jay's first official single, Dance With You, produced by Jaggy D, found its way into Jay's catalog of music in 2003. Dance With You went on to peak at number 12 on the UK singles pop charts. DWI set Jay's music career on the trajectory he only once ever dreamed of. Capturing the attention of Virgin Record executives led Dance With You to Sean landing a million dollar contract and soon enough he'd be signed under Virgin Records label. In the meanwhile, Jay was tired of the uni life, deciding to eventually drop out to hyper focus on his music career. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Following his goals served him best and was ultimately the best decision. His second single, Eyes On You, ate up whatever Dance With You was trying to do, reaching number six on the UK singles chart, while his third single, Stolen, charted at number four. Me Against Myself, Jay's first ever studio debut album, would be released around 2004 to mix reviews. Praise for his unique style, Jay combined R&B with British hip-hop, which is already controversial as is, and Indian music. It peaked at number 29 and went gold with 2 million units sold in India. Although Jay was just getting his name really out there, his stay at Virgin would become extinct in 2006. Virgin was taking entirely too long releasing his music and ended up scrapping his upcoming album altogether. They also didn't know how to market him properly. An entire 16-track project was in the works, but those over at Virgin thought it was a tad bit too R&B, aka too black for the market at that time, which they thought was leaning more toward folk guitar type vibes. Soon after, Jay launched his own record label, Jaded Records. He'd finally get the opportunity to create and publish his second studio album, My Own Way which, with the help of his loyal fan base, made it all the way to number six on the UK albums chart. He was huge over the pond in London. However, Jay had yet to crack in the US. Jay's single, Rye, caught the attention of Birdman's Cash Money Records, which would open new doors for him. 
now signed to cash money, Jay was finally about to take that flight on Jet Global Domination. He had the biggest hip hop label at the time backing him. A new team, new music. It wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a contrived effort to do it. It was just something dope. I just felt like new ears and new support. His current music lacked the Indian influence it once had and was more digestible to the uncultured masses. The year was 2009 and Jay was officially the first British Asian artist signed to Cash Money. The first single as a Cash Money Cash Cow? Baby Are You Down 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 Down. His unofficial, official debut single under a new label, Down had been released in the same year and featured Cash Money alumni, none other than Lil Wayne. This track gave Jay's career more than enough ammunition to set his career ablaze, shoving Jay into mainstream relevancy. And it's more than likely his most recognized song to date. In that same year, his first album under Cash Money, All or Nothing, was released. He'd follow up down with Do You Remember? All or Nothing went on to peak at number 37 on the Billboard 200 and sold around 32K copies in its first week and 13,000 sold in the following week. Down was a cute radio pop bop. Still held some of those R&B undertones he wanted to desperately hold on to, but overall was giving very much fun pop with the backing of a rap segment. It was apparent Jay had then reached a new high in his career, but to Jay, those numbers just weren't good enough. It steered him weary. Not wanting to ease up on the momentum, he was back to work ASAP on his third album, Freeze Time. Freeze Time never did see the sun's glaring rays as it would be placed on the shelf and forgotten about entirely. I used to rewind it and we still caught it, rewind and learn all the words. Despite multiple delays, Jay still kept his fans on their toes. A Twitter spat with an unknown rapper named Wiley took place in 2011. Wiley had accused Jay of being a culture vulture by mimicking African American culture via his lyrics. I don't care how many Asian fans defend him. Jay Sean, you're a dickhead. You ain't done nothing for the UK ever. Juggy is a don for you. Jay's fans immediately came to his defense, prompting Wiley to respond yet again. I love the Asian community, minus Jay Sean. Trust me, bug up Priya, she is so special. Which Asian artist has Jay Sean brought through? Tell me, please. Now, I know TCS has no dog in this fight, but it seems like a desperate hater's attempt to attach herself to a rising artist, if you ask me. Jay, yet again, replied back in the respectable manner by telling his followers to not get sucked into the negativity. It's all good. We hold our heads high and move upwards towards achieving greatness. Pay it no mind. Wiley the rapper may really have just been drinking that haterade because Jay was quick to make it be known that he had put Wiley on the remix for his hit single Down. I'm confused brother. I put you on a remix for Down and I worked with Skepta and BBK. I've always had shown love for you in the grime scene. Chip, Tiny, I've worked with all of you. His fourth album Neon did something, but it failed to do its big one. With features from Rick Ross, Busta Rhymes, and Ace Hood, it suffered some delays and couldn't release on any due dates due to legal issues and tracks being leaked. Collabs with Nicki Minaj would come to fruition, and he'd even co-headline with Joe Jonas on the Joe Jonas and Jay Sean tour. Neon reached 116 on Billboard's 200 and sold around 4,000 copies in its first week, which back in those days would be considered a flop. Jay continued to work with Cash Money on a few more records before eventually parting ways. We'd later find out there were a variety of reasons Jay left Cash Money, family issues and personal concerns being some of them. But overall, Sean just wasn't satisfied with the direction CM had him going in. Cash Money had been battling a lot of legal issues at the time as well since Wayne filed a lawsuit against his industry poppy for failure to pay royalties. Jay went on to say that he fell out of place on the label and couldn't express himself the way he desired to. Delays and lack of attention and promotion were also contributing factors, which from what we know was an issue with many of the acts on the label. Birdman's empire would soon become a target yet again, after Orange Music Factory, who worked on several of Jay's songs while signed to cash money, such as Down, Fire, Do You Remember, and Lights Off. The judge found cash money guilty and was ordered to pay up 1.4 million in royalty fees. Jay's relationship with his now former label is still mutual. He went on to release music and even collabed with Guru Randawa in 2020 for their song Surma Surma, which now sits at over 100 million views on the T-Series channel. Now a proud papa of two, whom he had with his wife since 2009, Thara Prashad, Jay Sean continues on his independent route, which seems to be working fairly well for him. 
His career has had an up and down, a regular turnabout. Well, when you're doing something out of passion, something you truly love, it doesn't matter how hard or time consuming it is. You're going to put your all into it. He reached pinnacles many still have yet to achieve, blossoming under the eyes of cash money. Time can only tell what Jay Sean will dabble into next. Are you surprised to find out about what happened to Jay Sean? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.